This is Amy J, and you're listening to Chasing Dreams with me, Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Hey, Dream Chasers. Thank you so much for tuning into episode 174 of Chasing Dreams. Before we get too far, guys, here's a message from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by our Patreon campaign supporters. Thanks to all of you for not just your monetary support, but for also believing in my mission to help inspire, empower, and equip people to chase their dreams. Your help makes it possible for me to continue that work. For more information on our Patreon campaign and or if you'd like to donate a dollar a month to help keep the show going, you can learn more at amyj21.com slash Patreon. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Thanks again. Quick editing note for you guys. As I recorded this episode, I talked about lessons. These were all lessons that you should take into 2019, when in actuality, I want them to be practices for you. They shouldn't just be lessons that go in the ear and out the other. These are practices that you should be doing day in and day out for your life and not just in 2019. Okay, so that is something I wanted to let you know. When you hear the word lesson, change it to practice, okay? And there's one lesson, quote unquote, that you will hear that is more of a reminder and you'll figure out which one that is, okay? So for now, on to the show. All right, guys, welcome back. We are well into 2019 and I just wanted to drop a message. I know you heard from me at the closing of 2018, but before we go back to regular guests next week, I wanted to talk about three things to take into 2019. All right. It's, it's easy to make New Year's resolutions, right? But unless we have a plan to go with those resolutions, we're going to stop doing them before we get out of January. In fact, some of you may have given up on your resolutions already and it's only, I don't know, by the time this airs, week and a half in. Not even a week and a half in, it's like a week and a day in. So a week, right? And so it's okay. It's okay if you've already given up because I want you to get back on, okay? I want you to get back on and I want you to try it again, but with a different mindset, okay? I want you this year to change your perspective on how you approach things. I want you to change your perspective and and then you're going to change your life. Okay, so if you have always been looking at the glass half empty, I want you to wake up every day and just change that. It's your your gut reaction is going to be like pessimism and your gut reaction is going to be the negative. But I want you at least for a week, guys, at least for a week. And you're going to have to consciously do this at least for a week. Change your perspective on things. Take a moment and think about the positive. Wake up in the morning and be grateful for what you have. Okay. So like, for example, this morning I woke up, I I say a prayer in the morning and I remind myself of how blessed I am, how grateful and what, for what I'm grateful for. And, you know, this morning to, to be open with you, I was grateful for my parents. I was grateful for my friends who came and visited and that I got to reunite with in the last two weeks. I was grateful for my family, my cousins. I was grateful for being able to wake up, honestly. I was grateful for as as much as my feet were hurting because we had a busy day the, the last few days. I was grateful for having feet. And that may say, seem simple, but it's not simple to some other people. So I, I, for me, I wanted to be reminded that I shouldn't take that for granted. I'm grateful for having a job that I can go to on Monday. I'm grateful for being able to do this podcast. I'm grateful for you listeners listening to me and taking something away. 
I'm grateful for the messages I get saying that this is helping them, that some of you are students of the podcast, so to speak. You know, I'm grateful for my Cohen Collective. I'm grateful for my accountability partners. I'm grateful for my siblings, right? And these aren't in order. It doesn't have to be compared. Oh, she's more grateful for one over the other. Ooh, no, it's not about that. It's about remembering where you are today and how you got here and being thankful for it. I'm grateful for the education I've had. I'm grateful for the things I've learned. I am so grateful for the mistakes I make, for the failures I have, because through those, I have learned to do better. That seems like a funny thing to say, but it's true. Okay, so I want you to, one, change your perspective. Be grateful for things. Change your perspective and be positive about things. I want you to change your perspective on things that seem impossible and think, how can I make this probable? I want you to change your perspective. And when things seem like it'll never happen, I want you to find another way. Okay, try that. Try that for one day. Try that for two days. Then try it for a week. See what happens if you change your perspective on things. And then the second thing I want you to do is I want you to embrace your fears. That's my motto this year. Embrace your fears. And I started it off. Okay, so I, I'm not just talking about it. I have a game plan. And so the first thing I'm doing is I'm chasing, I'm embracing my fear of being in front of a camera. Photos is one thing, but being in front of a video camera is a whole nother thing. So I'm doing a 31 day video challenge. It's hashtag 31 vid challenge. And I am giving and sharing back with you guys 31 lessons that I've learned that I want to give back to you. Now, they're one minute videos that I've been posting on social media. So they're on my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, the best place probably to find it is going to be Instagram. And we're labeling it. I think we're kind of like doing two days uh, now because we kind of started late in airing it. I've, I've been videotaping every day in January. So I've been straight with that. The airing is a little off, but I kind of like that because we're kind of doing two a days. Um, but we'll see. We might go back to one. We might catch up and then do one a days, um, depending on how my team feels. But um, it's nerve wracking. Like, no lie. That first video, I, I did like probably 15 takes. And actually for the first six videos, I've been doing at least, at least 10 takes on them. Because I'm like, oh, no, what are people going to think? Oh, I fumbled the lines, right? I've never given you the rough cut. You guys have gotten the best cut uh, that I've done. But even the best, best cut, I am so petrified of putting it out there. Being a voice behind the camera, is, uh, behind the microphone is one thing, but being in front of the camera, totally another. Because you got to be made up. You got to really know what you're saying, all this stuff. So that is a fear I'm embracing. And, you know, so far I'm getting more comfortable with it. And we're on day, by the time I'm recording this, day six. And so it's going to take time. But because I'm practicing and embracing my fear every time I get in front of the camera, it's helping. Right. So by day 31, I won't be necessarily entirely comfortable. It's never a thing about going in front of a camera, but I'll be less likely to to say no. Right. And the other way I'm embracing this fear of being in front of the camera, 2019 is going to show you a behind the scenes of these recordings. We're switching over to Zoom. We're going to do video recordings of our interviews. We're going to share that. So that is another way that not only forces me to embrace my fear, but also give you guys a little bit insight into these recordings, which we thought would be kind of cool for 2019 to do. But that's not the only for fear I'm embracing, right? So in December, we did, I, I did with my sister and my brother, we did um, Climb Zone and I faced and embraced my fear of heights, which is crazy. And, you know, that first time I went up there, it took me a minute before I could, Gina and Josh were ready. They were, they were waiting. And I was like, all right, you can do this. I had to give myself a pep talk to get up there. And I'm climbing and you're so focused on climbing, but then you get to the top, you pause and I, I look back down because, you know, the whole idea is to embrace my fear. 
it wasn't so bad. It wasn't that bad. I mean, it was a little bit bad, but it wasn't that bad. And I'm not saying I was cured by the time I got to the top and came back down. Gina and Josh probably did 10 or 12 um, climbs. I did probably four or five, maybe six. Because it, it's not, it's still not as easy, but I had fun. And the thing about fear is it holds us back from being able to live our best life. The thing about fear is not the regret you'll have. I think I would have regretted not having gone on the climbs because it was so much fun, right? So it's the possibility you're missing out on. So you don't want to live your life with regret, right? So that was uh, one of my themes a few years ago, live without regret. And truly, when you embrace your fears, you're living that life without regret. Because if I hadn't gone and I had heard all about it, I'd be like, man, I wish I had gone on that climb. I wish I didn't let fear hold me back. Because instead of focusing on what could happen, imagine what happens if you don't go. What would happen if you don't do what you're afraid of? Right? If you're afraid of an opportunity at work, okay, you know what will happen if you don't do it. You know what will happen if you don't do it. But what are the possibilities that are opened if you do it? Right? So that's that's the thing I want you guys to focus on. Also, embrace your fears. Imagine what can happen if you don't let fear stop you from making progress. Embrace it and do it anyway. In the words of Mel Robbins, because she's really captured that hashtag. If you go to hashtag do it anyway, she's really done something with that. But it's a great saying in general because, you know, we've all been using it to do it anyway. Do it anyway. Right. Embrace your fear. Do it anyway. OK, a lot a lot of people live in fear and they're not living their full life. I don't want you guys to do that in 2019 or in whatever year you're listening this to, because this is timeless recordings, right? Don't let fear let you live a half-life. Embrace your fear and live life to the fullest. Okay, so that's number two. Embrace your fears. Number three. So when I did this, these vid challenges, so far, um, these are things that I want to talk about in my book to come. And, you know... I've talked about this book. It's still there. It's in the planning process. We're working on it. You know, so these are topics that we're talking about. One of them is don't chase the money. And that got, that got more comments and reactions um, in my mailboxes than some of my other comments. And some were like, I'm going to share this with my parents. I'm going to really think about this, you know, and other people who are living their best life, uh, are like, yes, tell them, Mamie, tell them. And I mean it. I said what I said. Don't chase the money. The thing that happens when you chase the money is you forget what you're doing. You forget why you're doing it. The why is the most important thing. There are people, and I said this in my video, there are people who are living their best life on a 12K salary. There are people living their best life on a 32K salary. There are people who are living their worst life at a six-figure salary because they are chasing money, right? So it's not about the money. We've got it so twisted that we think we need money to be happy. And that's not how it works, guys. So the faster you learn that, the faster you embrace that concept, the faster you will see your life turn around. Okay. Life is not about money. You need money to survive, but you don't need the material goods to be happy. Truly, you need to chase what makes you happy and then money will follow. If you enjoy helping people, then find jobs that help people. It doesn't have to be a six figure job that helps people. That could be something that makes you miserable. But then you find a job that's at 42K and you're helping people and you find, hey, I can live off of this. I can survive off of this. I am happy waking up and going to my job because of this. 
Because you're not chasing the money. You're chasing your happiness. You're chasing your why. What is it you want to do? What is it that makes you happy? You have to be able to answer that and be able to follow that. There are people who have quit their six-figure jobs and become writers. There are people who have quit jobs that have become a whole new occupation. I left uh, computer engineering, not because I hated the job or anything, but it wasn't what truly made me happy. I loved it, but it wasn't the thing that does it for me, right? And I, I switched careers. I'm I'm known for switching my careers back in the day, but I found my happy place. Life is figuring out your happy place. Okay, so you're going to have these experiences and some of them are going to work, some of them are not, and you're going to figure out what makes you happy. So the things that didn't make you happy aren't a waste of time. You just found what doesn't work. Okay, so you have to keep having those opportunities, but if you keep focusing on the one thing that's making you money, you're never going to figure out what makes you happy. And then you're just living life, a half life, not even a full life, because you're dreading waking up. You're dreading going to work. You're dreading doing what you do. And, you know, it's not all about work. What is it you're doing in life? If you have a job that's just okay, fine. Okay. But what is the rest of your life? You're, you are not defined by your job. That shouldn't be the first thing that you say. That shouldn't be the first thing that you talk about. Who are you? And you have to be okay with the answer you give because regardless of what people say and people will tell you this and that, they will give you responses about yourself. You should do this. You should do that. This is what you should become. I think you're X. I think you're Y. You need to tune that out. What is it you think? Not what you think influenced by other people. Because you are enough. You are who you are. The fact that you're going to school and learning more doesn't mean you aren't enough. It means you are enough for yourself and you want to do better for yourself. You're not doing it because you're not enough. Guys, you are enough. You need to be happy for you, not happy for other people, not happy for strangers, not happy for what your society says, not happy for what your family says. You are enough. And if you feel that you're not, I need you to take some time to figure out why. What is it? Because that's going to define it, right? If you're doing stuff and you're chasing money and you're, you're doing things that you don't make you happy, take a step back and figure out what it is. And if you need to make a change, a pivot then do it. Okay. So I guess that's kind of two lessons in one. Uh, well, so we'll make it four lessons to take into 2019. Embrace your fears. Change your perspective. Don't chase the money. And remember, you are enough. Do all of that this year. Okay. This is a new year. This is a new month, a new week, a new day. I want you to remember these things and take that into 2019 and see what happens at the end of the year. If you follow these things, write it down, write it on a piece of paper, tape it to your wall, write it on a mirror, tape it to your wall. If you guys are struggling with enoughness, by the way, I want you to wake up in the look in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth, because you should be brushing your teeth when you're brushing your teeth and look in the mirror, look at yourself and say, I am enough. That's it. I am enough because you are, all right? So I, guys, I just want to give you those lessons before we go back to regular guests next week and know that you are enough. Embrace your fears, change your perspective and don't chase the money. Figure out your why and and chase that, okay? All right, guys, we will be back with regular guest episodes. You guys can find all the show notes on the show notes page at amyj21.com slash episode 174. That's episode 174. Till next time, guys, keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with her on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram via at Chasing Dreams HQ. Or you can find Amy on Twitter at amyj21.com. 
That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Be sure to visit headquarters over at ChasingDreamsHQ.com for more inspiration, motivation, and resources to help with your own dream chase. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing. Chasing.